Hey everyone, Mr. Shutterbug here. Welcome to my channel. I have something that I'm really excited to share with you today. It is a brand new micro brushless drone build, and here it is. Uh, 75 millimeter nylon frame. Uh, it looks like a Beta 75 Pro. It almost weighs the same as a Beta 75 Pro, but these are 12,500 kV 1102 motors, and it is designed to hold a 2S battery under here. This thing has some serious power, and I'm really excited about it. Now, I've already posted some videos of this on my channel and some pictures, uh, flight videos, and I've got a lot of questions about that, uh, questions from you guys, and uh, so I want to answer some of those questions. That's why I'm making this video. I want to tell you a little bit more about it, uh, explain a little bit of what I was going for with this build, but then I'm going to show you some uh, new flight footage. Check that out. It's super fun. And if you stick around after that, I'll actually show you under the canopy and a little bit of uh, what it would take if you wanted to build one of these. So check it out. look at the actual build. So here it is up close. Hopefully you can see down in here these motors. These are Flex RC 12,500 kV 1102 motors. Uh, these are 1535 quad blade props. So for putting this together the first and most obvious challenge is just how to mount these motors. This frame is designed for 0703 motors and these are 1102s. And so what I did is I put two screws in each, just two uh, seems to be enough. Um, and this one I had to drill right through the frame. There's not normally a hole there. This one there is a hole, um, but it's not quite enough separation. So I had to kind of dremel out this way. Um, so this one is actually getting pretty close to the side of the material, but not quite breaking through. And those two screws are holding it. Now when you do this, uh, the axle that comes in under here, or the shaft, um, will actually rub on the plastic. 
And so you can't have that. It's got to be able to spin freely under there and the C-clip has to be able to move around freely. And so what I did for that is I just took a blunt old soldering iron and I actually kind of just went in just like this and melted away a cavity uh, on the top side of these wheel wells so that it would the plastic would shrink back a little bit. Um, and then you can spin the motors. You probably can't see it in the video, but in person you can look in there and you want to see that C-clip uh, spinning freely. All right, now that I've got the top off, you can see my solution for mounting the stack. Now, I experimented with different ways of orienting the stack. At first, I thought maybe 45 degrees. Uh, that's how it was in my last build. I decided against that, though, because the ESC motor wires would have been here, coming out kind of towards the propellers. I was afraid they might snag, you know, in here, or it could go this way. Uh, and so I decided against that. There's room for uh, the stack to go forward, uh, but there's nothing to mount it to. On the bottom, there's just these struts down here. There isn't even a flat surface to stick it to. And so that was the biggest question. How am I going to mount it? And you can probably see here my solution. This is a piece of clear packaging material that I cut. And I cut it to the shape of a whoop flight controller. So, and then I put these holes so that it can mount onto the pegs. Then I just kind of beveled out the inside here to follow the um, wheel well and I cut out a little bit of the inside so that the wires wouldn't get pinched. And that's it, and then I drilled through here. These are rubber grommets, uh, the kind used to soft mount a whoop flight controller. I tried standoffs and things, but, uh, but that always resulted in the stack being too high for my uh, canopy to go over. Uh, so this gives just enough separation. I've got the ESCs below and the flight controller above, and these are M2 screws and M2 uh, nylon nuts holding it together on both sides. And that's it. Um, I'm this. I'm really liking this solution. The material is almost indestructible. You know, it's that clamshell packaging material that's really hard to cut. Um, so it, it's even tougher than the frame. Uh, but it keeps the flight controller in perfect alignment. Um, and it can flex. And uh, it's just, I haven't had any problems. Now, while we're in here, uh, you probably noticed this guy back here. It looks like a big gas tank or something. This is a 150 nanofarad capacitor. And I've got it mounted directly to the main power leads that come in here. And uh, by the way, you'll notice these main power leads don't connect to the underside of the ESC. They're connecting to the top. That's because I mounted the ESC upside down. I did that specifically so the capacitor could come up through the top. Uh, there didn't seem to be a good spot for it down here. And uh, also there's this ribbon cable and there's plenty of room for it on the underside. Uh, but if this was on top, it would get in the way of the shim and uh, of the flight controller and everything. So I mounted the ESCs upside down. Uh, but the capacitor, you might ask, you know, is it really necessary to have a capacitor this big in a build this light? And, you know, I don't know if it's really necessary, uh, but I think it's worth the wait. Uh, my first build uh, with this stack and 2S motors, um, that ESC is actually right here. And I don't know if you can see right here, but these chips are totally fried out. What happened was I was flying, I wasn't actually going that fast. Uh, I, I definitely wasn't exceeding the amperage uh, rating of the ESC or anything. I bumped into a wall and there was a flash of light and, uh, and smoke and I was lucky there wasn't a bigger fire or something from that. Um, and I think what happened was there was a, a power spike um, that, you know, this chip was probably bad. You know, cheap manufacturing quality control isn't necessarily great. Uh, but I think that power spike pushed it over the edge. And a friend of mine uh, had a similar build and almost the same thing happened to him uh, like a couple days later. So I thought when I, when I rebuild it and add a capacitor um, to just kind of absorb some of that uh, electrical turbulence. And I have not had any problems with that since. Um, and also my video is, uh, is better. So I think that's a win. I think this capacitor is worth its weight, even though it's kind of big uh, for a build that's going to be ultra light like this. So the other thing you can see under here is this whiteboard. This is the uh, full speed RC Nano FR Sky receiver. And this white wire, which goes under the canopy, is uh, the antenna. This uh, receiver plus antenna, the whole thing is half a gram. And that's why I picked it for this build. It's super light um, and that's awesome. It's D8 and not D16. And the range uh, is not amazing. I've never had a fail safe uh, because of range flying this thing. Um, but my transmitter does let out a kind of annoying high-pitched squeal every once in a while, uh, complaining about low signal strength. 
uh, if I'm flying, um, like in the video when I was flying around the trees at the park, I got that every once in a while. And so this is definitely not a long range flight controller. I haven't had any actual problems with it, so I haven't replaced it yet. I do have an XM receiver um, that I might switch it to for better range in the future. And there's lots of room underneath the ESC to mount something like that. So the next thing to talk about is the canopy. Looks kind of like this. Um, you can get these in multi-packs on Amazon. They come in different colors. Uh, they're pretty tough. They're not indestructible, but uh, but they are pretty tough. And they just mount right down in here, screw down through the pe uh, pegs. But if you look at this, you'll see that the stack is right there through that hole. Um, it's actually this uh, ribbon cable connector right there. And so uh, it is kind of pushing down on that. There's not a ton of room for the camera to go in there, but it works for me because I like to mount the camera like this, like it's slouching in the chair, not all the way in. Um, and I do that to get more up tilt on the camera. I also uh, resolder the antennas to sweep them back so they don't snag on anything. Uh, and that seems to work fine for me. Now, <clears throat> when I first put this together, I actually cut away the underside of the canopy uh, to hollow out this camera port um, so that it could sit on here better. Um, and what happened was, almost before I was done building it, it started getting a crack. And once there's a crack, the crack can kind of spread all the way through, um, and that's how these get broken. So this time, this hole is actually bigger than normal. Um, I just took a lighter and I kind of melted it and pushed it up a little bit. So this one is actually ready to go, and it doesn't have any of those cuts already going. So I'm hoping it'll be tougher this time. And if it's not tough enough, then my next build will look like this. You can totally stack more than one of these canopies and then that would be a really tough canopy for this build. It wouldn't, it would add another part of a gram, um, but you got options on that. Now the battery I'm using is the Turnigy Nanotech. This is 300 milliamp hour, 45 to 90 C rating. And I also have uh, a few of these. This is the same thing, but 35 to 70 C rating. This one uh, is a little more than a gram lighter than this one. And so that's why I wanted to try both. I haven't done a direct side to side comparison, but they both work great. And the width is perfect for the battery bay on the Beta 75 Pro frame. You can see it fits right there, right where that 550 milliamp hour 1S battery would go, but uh, they're a little bit taller. So I had to cut off this post. So my solution was to run one of these Velcro uh, cable ties through here. And I kind of tighten it down like this, and that holds it really nicely in place. The only thing that would happen is it might slide uh, forward or back this way in a crash. And so if you see on the bottom of my batteries, I've got some Velcro under here. That Velcro isn't actually sticking to anything. The Velcro is going right in front of the front bar and right behind the back bar, and that makes it so that it can't slide. This strap would be plenty to hold it in uh, in flight, but in a crash, having something like this to stop it from sliding forward and back is the difference between being able to turtle mode and go uh, or having a lopsided battery that you'd have to go get. Now, one thing I wasn't sure about actually is the, what kind of power connector to use. These are the red JST connectors, and I went with these just because that's what comes on all the batteries, and I'd have to change all the leads if I wanted to use something else. Uh, but I've considered switching to XT30s. The issue is these are only actually rated for six amps and I can easily pull four times that in a hard punch out. And so uh, we're getting a lot of resistance in here. Uh, we might be getting some heat buildup even in this connector. And so a friend of mine uh, put together a similar build and was telling me that I might get a little bit less uh, voltage sag in those crazy punch outs. Uh, if I switch to the XD30. So that might be an interesting experiment for the future. Uh, originally, I was thinking about actually um, connecting two of my Whoop batteries, you know, like these, um, in series to make it into a 2S battery. And the reason I didn't do that is the same. It's just because, you know, then I'd be running all that current through this tiny little connector, which definitely can't handle it. And I don't want to fry um, these connectors or just bottleneck the power on the connector. So I'm going with real 2S batteries but maybe they need a bigger plug. I don't know. It'd be an interesting experiment for the future. And let's just take a quick look at the scale. Here it is all put together, uh, except for the battery. And that's coming in at 33.86 grams, uh, just under 34 grams. And uh, the battery, this is the 45 to 90 C, 17.37. 
this is the 35 to 70 C version 16.52 and four props comes in at 2.21 grams. Now I want to explain really briefly kind of what I was going for uh, with this build. If you've been following my channel or if you know me, you know that I have been racing this thing all winter long. Um, this is my Beta 65 S more or less uh, with the 7x16 motors. So good, so locked in, uh, so fast. Uh, I have been to so many races with this. I've had so much fun. Uh, I've flown around the house. I went to Hawaii and dive palm trees and stuff. Check out that video. Uh, and I love this thing, and it's super great. Uh, you know, but there are situations where you just wish you had more power. And of course, we're always trying to push the envelope. So back, I guess it was around Christmas time. Um, Myself and some of the people from Seattle Multi Rotors were talking about opening up a new uh, racing class for micro brushless in addition to the micro brushed. Um, and I and some other people got the Beta 75 Pro around that time, kind of hoping that that would be uh, another level of performance. I did a whole detailed review on that, and so um, I'll check out the link if you're interested. Um, you know, it was okay. It was it was a fun thing to fly, but it was not the next level performance I was looking for. And at the end of that video, I said basically, if you wanted to make it better, you would have to uh, increase the throttle uh, or uh, decrease the weight. And so this is my answer for increasing the throttle. Um, the, really the key is you just got to get higher voltage, and this takes a 2S battery, um, and it totally delivers all of the power that I kind of wished the Beta 75 did. Uh, Beta FPV, if you were listening, this is your frame. Um, you could make a slightly different version of this frame and have an amazing product on your hand. I really like these nylon frames. They're flexible, so they can take the impact uh, without anything uh, breaking. And the center stack is under this canopy. It's all actually really well protected. Even the camera, it looks like um, it would be unprotected. It looks like it would just take the blow. But really, these cameras are super tough, and most of the impact goes into the camera or into the rest of the frame. Um, and so my experience with these is that these frames are super tough. So really, that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I've certainly been enjoying this drone. If you build something like this, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, if this video is, is something that you like, feel free to share it. Feel free to comment and like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm making this video because you guys asked for more information. Um, and so I hope I was able to answer some of those questions. And um, and yeah, full parts list is in the video description as well as some links to some of the other videos uh, that are on my channel that I mentioned. Uh, and if you just look back on my channel, you'll find lots of videos of, of me flying this, me flying my previous build that's like this, and just lots of fun with these things. So if you like micro uh, drone racing, freestyle and everything, check it out. And thanks for watching.